Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Brother BQ950. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using the sewing machine. Now, most of your sewing is going to be straight stitches and maybe some zigzag. That's what most of my sewing is. I do do some buttonholes and some uh, lettering sometimes, but most of my sewing and mending is a straight stitch or a zigzag. That's what we're going to get started on today. So, when you turn on your machine, it, your machine is either going to be in the center needle position or in the side needle position, depending on what you've chosen in the um, in the settings. Now, default-wise, I believe this machine comes as a left side needle position. That's good because that, with the marks right here on the needle plate, where it says 5 8 inch and right there, if you sew on that, you're going to get a nice 5 8 inch seam allowance. Here, I'll show you. Okay. Also, I've got my speed slider set on a slower speed so I can show you. This actually will help keep me from sewing too quickly or keep it from zooming ahead. So when you're getting used to machine, your machine, have this right in the center. I think that would be a good idea. Okay, now, I'm showing you this here. You can see with the needle down, I can turn this and show you what that looks like. Then line it up with my needle marks or with my needle plate marks and keep sewing. If you want to do a back stitch, just press and hold and you go forward. You want to do the cutter button, you can go like that. It cuts the thread, lifts up the needle, and then just pull that right out of there like that. Okay, so 5 8 inch seam allowance with a left needle position. You can see it's right on the mark right there. Now you can do a center needle position or you can move your needle over different ways depending on what you want to do. You, you would use this button. You can see how it steps across like that. To get it back to default, just reselect that stitch like that. Whenever you have light, light the the white marks or the white numbers on a back, black background, that means you're at default. If you change that at all, it may, makes it a different um, setting, not in default. Okay, so that is straight stitch. Of course, you can put a uh, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and you can also do a locking stitch. And I'll show you what that looks like. Actually, if you wanted to put a locking stitch at the beginning, all you would need to do is push this and choose the stitch that has the locking stitch, that little dot right there. So that's number two, right there. And whenever I'm sewing, I like to hang on to that thread tail for the first couple stitches. Notice it gives us a little locking stitch and then it starts stitching. At the end, I can push this, push and hold. There we go, locking stitch, all done. I'm gonna push my cutter button, but I could also just lift up the needle, pull my threads around to the cutter on the side. We can do that. Now notice it stopped with the needle down. You can also change that in settings so it'll stop with the needle up. I kind of like to have my needle down because as I showed you before, you can lift up the presser foot, check your stitches, and you haven't lost your place. Now what about quilt piecing? Quilt piecing you can make a lot of adjustments here using your uh, width and length, or you could go to this mode here, which is this one right here, and P for piecing is number 29. I choose 29, and there I've got a shorter stitch length, and it has moved the needle over a little bit. Now, when we sew, we can use the edge of the presser foot, and then I'm going to sit to the side here so I'm going to see. But that's where I'm going to be watching is the edge of the fabric, even with the edge of the presser foot. Gave me a little bit of a locking stitch because I already had this on. I'm going to turn that off. But that's going to give me that quarter inch seam allowance. I'll show you what that looks like. Take my seam gauge, put that up to a quarter of an inch. And there we go. That's your quarter inch seam allowance. Easy to find, easy to choose, just in this mode here. Choose number 29P means piecing. That's, those are the stitches that you would use for piecing. S means um, there's a, uh, an attachment you can get as a side cutter. That's what the S means. And Q would be for a quilting stitch. So like some of your applique would be for Q for quilting. Okay, so what about zigzag? Now. 
if you're in this mode, you'd have to choose zigzag, but I like to just go back to my direct select mode. And that means any of these pictures that you see, just go to that picture and there you go, you got your zigzag. And you can make your zigzag narrower or wider depending on uh, your stitch application. Of course, you can make it longer or shorter. Um, like if you're gonna do some applique or something like that. Now this one here, uh, I'm gonna get into more about what the, uh, the operations panel is, but just know that this is, these buttons here are how you would adjust your tension on your thread. Instead of having a tension dial up here, that's what you have right there. So that's your basic getting started. Um, there's lots of other buttons and things, and look in your manual, it will also help. And your quick start guide that comes with this machine will also help. Now, another thing about the quick start guide that I should show you, this, your manual, covers different models of this machine. So you have like three different models. Now, sometimes it'll say if equipped with this feature or whatever. To know what, f what model you have, go to your quick start guide, open the front cover right here. Operation manual notations, it says model two right there. So you know that anything that refers to model two in this guide right here, say for instance, page B8, it tells you what's available for model two right there. So that's how you would know which parts of the manual apply to this. It's pretty generic. It's pretty even across the models, and that's why you have just one book for all three models. It, it applies to most things. But if there's a little difference, that's how you can tell. This is model two. Okay, I hope you found this to be a helpful video, and if you have, give us a thumbs up. If you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and on other machines here on our Montevilla YouTube channel, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.